amen and amen let me say hello to all of you my listeners wherever you are and i want you to learn to know that i love you my name is caesar this is knr and we are almost after uh, the quarter of the hour of seven we were supposed to have started with our born to lead but unfortunately things have changed and uh, because of time we will just move on straight to unbounded where we will share the word of God for the next 15 minutes or so and trusting that it will be able to inspire some who are with us on our show today. I don't feel uh, fit and into my best. I'm not on the top of myself because I think I caught some cold on my visits on all the other provinces during the week and I'm now not in a very full body shape. But in uh, be that as it may, I told myself that I will rise up here to studio and meet you and talk to you because you are so important to me. You cannot be silenced by any fever from whichever quarter that it comes from. And uh, today we will have to share the word of God quickly and briefly on and uh, uh, let me pick up the subject that I want us to look at very quickly. I was just uh, trying to think, okay, Let's talk about what I call a dare to change your life. Dare to change your life. In fact, I want to speak about the extreme makeover. The reason is simple. We are on the first Sunday of September, which is the beginning of spring. And everything is supposed to spring to life. And people normally do what they call spring cleaning. And you obviously would love to change your life. You have been succumbing to the harsh conditions of the winter period. And now the winter is gradually getting over and we are getting to spring and i want to say to you dare to change your life i want to let you know that my theme for the next few minutes is of extreme makeover you know and i want it to be made of two important words the first word is makeover the second word is extreme extreme makeover remember i want to speak to you on the unbounded word session on a theme that says dare, dare to change your life but i want to focus on extreme makeover because it's spring and we are supposed to be making an extreme make over now and i want this to hinge on two words and the first word is make over and the second word is extreme and I want you to listen to me as I begin to delineate those words so that you understand me exactly what I have planned to say to you uh, tonight. You know, in our culture, when we hear the term makeover, it usually has something to do with either a home that is going to be made over or a person's body that is going to be uh, made over. Um, I mean, it, it, it refers to a number of things. Extreme, the word extreme, when the word extreme is used, the word extreme, it, it, it means that it is not just cosmetic change, you know, uh, but something that goes to the core. When something is extreme, it goes to the core. You can paint a house, a little paint cover, a multitude of scenes, uh, but you can apply a serious makeup, you know, uh, but that is only a surface makeover. An extreme makeover is actually a great renovation that you take. When you make an extreme makeover, it's much more radical and, and permanent. It usually carries with it, the idea of radical, the idea of severe, the idea of intense, the idea of extraordinary, the idea of out outrageous, the idea of extravagant, the idea of perhaps even excessive, you know, uh, outer limits of pushing the boundaries, extreme, extreme. Therefore, I want to talk to you by uh, on the theme of extreme, uh, radical extreme, you know, I want to speak 
speak to you today about the, the extreme makeover, the extreme makeover, the extreme makeover. When I think of the idea of extreme makeover, extreme makeover in the biblical or spiritual sense, I think of certain keywords that include change, that include growth, that include progress, that include transformation, that include advancement, that include development, that include maturation, that includes maybe increase. All of these words and concepts are very much part of a Christian faith and a Christian experience. The key verse I will read tonight is found in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Please quickly run your fingers through your Bible until you get to Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. I might read a small portions of other parts of the scripture just to emphasize the key verses before we start on our teaching today. Now, the Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 puts it this way, the path of the just, the path of the just shineth more and more unto the perfect day. <laughs> yes, if I could if, if I could read for you from Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, it, it is said, We are changed from glory to glory. If I could read for you the book of uh Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, the Bible says, the, the, the Bible says, We are, we are, we are, we are uh, just a minute, just a minute. I'm, I'm on the radio, man. Yeah. Uh huh. Resume. Good. I nearly messed up all what I was doing there. Okay. All right. Uh, I've messed up. My people were all with me here. Uh, resume. Good. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Now. Uh -huh. uh, let me take you through uh, Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 1 and, and, and verse 2. Uh, we, it, the Bible says we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 10 says we are to increase more and more. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 15 says that uh, it says that our faith is to continue to grow. Maybe the most lovely one that I love is in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8 almost the last verse of chapter 18 where the Bible says we are to grow in grace and in the knowledge of him the walk with God is a progressive walk on and on deeper and deeper more and more right up until we meet the Lord whether through the grave or at the second coming of Christ Be, these are the times with which we could meet the Lord Philippians chapter 1 verse 16 if I read it from the amplified version it reads like like this, and I am convinced and sure of this very thing that he will be gay. Oh my God, I like this. I am convinced and I am sure of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. Now, nowhere are we instructed to become faint, not in the Bible. Nowhere are we instructed to relax in our efforts efforts him or nowhere are we being instructed to settle down or to level off or to taper off as the years go by on the contrary we are to stay ourselves up on the contrary we are to press towards the mark on the contrary we are to take the kingdom by force on the contrary we are to possess our inheritance and on the contrary, we are to lay hold of God's will. And on the contrary, we are to fight a good fight of, of faith. Yes, I trust that you are with me wherever you are watching this program at KNR. My name is Caesar. This is KNR. The program is called Unbounded Word, and I love you so much. We are just sharing the word of God on this first spring, a Sunday in September 2023. And I'm trusting that uh, those of you who will 
catch this will definitely make a spring clean and they will make a spring make over they will begin to set up things in a proper way wherever they are because most of us started with this understanding our salvation experience was a real turnaround and many began their walk with God, they they began uh, their Christian walk with a great zeal, with a, a great dedication. They began with goals, dreams, and spiritual aspirations. I know some of you, they began with great spiritual vitality, and maybe some of you, they began with hunger for more, and some of you, they began with a, a, a sincere desire to please God, a desire to make our lives count for something. Saturn, of course, is worried when he sees Christian like this. So he begins to work over time. He grabs his bag of tools and goes to work. He uses temptation, envy, lust, and covetousness. These are, are the things you could find in the tool bag of Satan. Envy, lust, and covetousness. You could use if that if they, they don't appear to succeed well, he would go on and use condemnation. If that doesn't work, he will go on and use evil thoughts. This is what you could find in the tool bag of the enemy who satan and all with the efforts to cool us down he will uh, he will use whatever he thinks will work on us he fires his best guts at us his goal is to dissipate the spiritual strength that is moving through us that is his final intention if if only he, his, his his spiritual power wherever he gets it from can assist him so that he could dissipate our spiritual strength that is moving within us. That's what the enemy is doing. And Satan is, is successful. I'm sorry to say that he becomes successful in many cases, perhaps because of our ignorance of his devices or an incomplete system of armor. You know, Satan has, in some cases, gained an advantage. He has neutralized him the effectiveness of many. Perhaps you are one of those whom Satan has sidelined and taken out of the game. Some Something has happened. I'm thinking of a song that says something wonderful happened. You know, something has happened. You started out well, but Satan has neutralized you. How did it happen? What put you on the bench? What apparently, uh, at least maybe in your mind, has destroyed your chances of finishing your race, what it is. It's most likely something different for different people. Some have been drawn away and enticed into sin. Yay, I want to take about a uh, talk about extreme makeover. Extreme makeover. Some have sinned, some have drawn away and enticed into sin. This individual, like Samson, he had a great start, but somehow, through moral failure, he did not live up to his potential. You know, that guy called Samson, he had big muscles, he was strong and powerful. You know, yes, the only problem with him, he had a very weak backbone. He had you no know, backbone, though. He had a lot of strength. He was he was having a backbone of a banana. You know, he had he had a great start, but somehow through moral failure, he did not live up to his potential. And perhaps like Samson, you have come to your senses. You have repented. You have made things right with God and men. Now you have saved your time. Yes, so to speak. But you are still on the sideline because Satan has told you this. Satan has told you that you are all washed up. You will never play again. You know, the handle is too big. It can never be overcome. You do not deserve a second chance. You have sold your birthright. It's over with you. This is a message from the pit of hell that Satan himself, who can say those words to you, you know, the sad thing is that you believe Satan. He has convinced you that you are not worthy of, you are of no value to God. What Satan has not told you is that. Let me tell you what he has missed in telling you. Satan has not told you that God is God of a second chances. Extreme makeover is our topic today. God is a God of second chances. Someone said, Samson and Kenda Tetangai, he once said, Give me another chance, oh God. And his hair began to grow. What can I do? 
are cooler. Some have had an experience that they, they feel has disqualified them from active service in God's army. It could be anything. It could be a divorce. It could be a child out of wedlock. It could be a criminal record. It could be alcoholism. It could be a child that has turned his back on God. It could be bankruptcy. I mean, the list is endless. I cannot remember everything that happens to so many people across who love God at the beginning. And because of these situations, Satan has beaten them down, sometimes through the mouth of other Christians, and he told them that they have forfeited their future. I am not saying that God takes pleasure in divorce. Please don't misinterpret me. I'm not saying that God takes pleasure in immorality. Please don't misunderstand me. I am not saying that God takes pleasure in criminal behavior of bankruptcy, but I'm saying that if we have truly repented and made things right with God and the man, that we do have a future in God. Paul had a future, even though he had been responsible for the death of so many Christians. Matthew had a future, even though he had cheated many people. David had a future, even though he had committed adultery and murder. God was able to put the pieces of these lives together and get glory out of their lives at the end. Yes, he had to put the pieces of their lives together and was at the end glorified by people who were murderers, by people who were adulterers, by people who were swindlers and cheaters, by people who have killed other people, number innumerable people that they have killed, but God gave them a second chance. It is true that all of these things leave scars on our lives, but those scars need to be nothing more than testimonies and visible reminders of God's grace and healing power. Let me tell you in the second place that some have made some wrong choices early on in their Christian life and now they feel that it is too late to change. They, they, it, it is too late to change their course. Perhaps they felt a specific call of God when they were young, but they got sidetracked through other endeavors and worldly curse. Perhaps they, want, they, they, they went into a career that has led them further and further from their families and from God, and they feel a little like they are trapped in, and it is too late for them to do anything about it. You may feel like you are a wheel pool. You know, life is out of control. Things are spinning so fast that if you try to jump off now and fear that everything may come crashing on your lap, you know, uh, crashing down around you, Satan has convinced you that you are better off to stay where you are uh, than to try to change now because it is too late. You are too old to change. Oh, Satan can do that. He once said so to Caleb. He once said so to Moses. He once said so to Paul, you know, uh, I'm here to tell you that you are never too old to change. You can teach an old dog some new tricks in spiritual matters. No one is too old for Bible school or technical school if God is in it. You do not have to settle for a status quo. You can change your life. You are not too old. Fill your own gap. You are not too old to get a new job. You are not too old to learn the computer. You are not too old to go back to school. You are not too old to get involved in a new ministry. We must have Caleb spirit that says, give me that mountain. Give me that mountain. That's what Caleb says. Some have experienced failure of some kind. That brought them to place of personal public humiliation in ministry or, or in service. You tried to move into an area that you felt God wanted, but things did not go well, and you felt flat on your face and, 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 and in front of your witnesses. The devil has used this experience and has rerun it many times. It's even trending on Facebook if that is the case. You know, you, you know what, 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 what the devil has. He has convinced you that you are a failure and you cannot excel. He has led you to believe that all of the successful people that you see around you have never been brought uh, through what you have been through. They have never been humiliated. You are afraid to try again. It hurts too much. The real truth is that every successful person has, le has, has left a string of failure behind them. 
ask me, I will tell you. I have left a string of failures behind me. I did not drop from heaven with a helicopter. I was born here. I was programmed into sin. I was groomed into becoming an excellent sinner as a small boy, as a young man at school, at high school, even at college before I met the Christ. You know, I have done so many ugly things. You know, a six-year-old came home from school one day with a note from the teacher in which it was suggested that he'd be taken out of the school because he was too stupid to learn and his name was Thomas Edison. I say this example because I am having a background in science. I know precisely the works of this Thomas Edison. Edison was, he was too stupid to, 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 to learn. That, that, that's what happened at school one day, you know, to Thomas Edison. Edison was awarded 1,300 and 68 separate and distinct patterns during his lifetime. He passed away at the age of 84 in October 18, 1931, on the anniversary date of his invention of the incandescent bulb. That is the light bulb that we have today. The man who invented it died on the 18th of October in 1931. His name was Thomas Edison. Dr. Wema von Branch, the missile scientist and the satellite expert, flung the maths and physics in his early school, school years. You know, a boy was slow to learn, to talk, uh, 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 that his parents thought that he was abnormal and his teachers called him a misfit. His classmates avoided him and seldom invited him to play with them. He failed his first college entrance exam at the college in Zurich in Switzerland. A year later, he tried again. In a time, he became the world's famous scientist. His name is Albert Einstein. Yes, I hope you are listening to me. You know, some years ago, a man over 60 was offered nearly 200000 for a restaurant, motel, service station, business that had spent his lifetime trying to build. He turned the offer down because he loved the business and wasn't ready to retire. Two years later, at the age of 65, he was flat broke and no income to look forward to, but a small social security check uh, uh, each month. The state had built a, a, a new highway by passing his business and he lost it. Most men would have been crushed by such a blow, but he refused to give up. Instead, he took uh, 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 the stock. He took the stock, you know, and uh, th th there was one thing that he knew how to do, fried chicken. Maybe he could sell this knowledge to others. He kissed his wife goodbye in an old battered car and with a pressure cooker and a can of specially prepared flour, he set out to sell this idea to other restaurants. It was tough going and he often slept in his car because he couldn't afford a motel room. <coughs> Yes, a few days later, he built a nationwide franchise restaurant that we now call KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. His name was Kendall, was Kendall Saunders. You might have heard of him. None of these men uh, or individuals fail as God's money to stop breathing. They were not going to be trotted by, by criticism, by setbacks, by false start, or by bumps along the way. They were never trotted. Let me end my talk to you by saying this. You know, please listen to me. So how do we respond? God wants to extend a second chance to you in this evening, perhaps a third chance or maybe a fourth one. God wants to get us back on the path of the just. God wants to get the people of God motivated and moving once again. God wants to see the devices of Satan and 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 and, and, and destroyed completely uh, and 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 rise in faith to face new challenge. God wants to to see. Uh, he, he wants us to dare to change our lives. He wants to stay our lives uh, or ourselves once again. God wants us to come back to his perfect plan of our lives. For some, this means this.
let me begin to speak to you. I know some people are listening to me, but I know that some will listen later as this will remain on your device for the next 30 days. Yeah, for some, this means a career adjustment. For some, it might mean reaching out again for ministry that God has laid on your heart. For some, it could mean becoming the employer or becoming the husband, the mother or the father, and they would recall like to be. Some need to get back to that close relationship with God. Whatever the change is, it must must be consistent with God, his word, and his perfect plan for your life. They said that life begins in 40. Actually, life begins the moment we begin to respond to God's change. You see all things that have life change. If you have life, you must change. Everything that has life changes, and nothing that has life that cannot change. Life could begin anew of you today. I wonder would you dare to change your life? Can I say this as I begin to taper towards the close and pray for you? I must leave before the fever get cold of me because I have prayed to God that it must be out of my system. Now, let me say this. I wonder, would you dare to change your life? You know, go back through these four main categories and pray for people. Pray for for people. Let me begin to pray for you as we end our session today. My father, I pray for your children, those who are listening via the stream yard, those who are listening via my device. I pray that you help them to make an extreme makeover touch their hearts, heal their soul, lift them up, my Father. I pray, release your favor upon each and every one of them. Let your love and regard for them. Raise them up, oh my God, I pray. Father, I ask that may those who are beginning to doubt if they will ever make it, understand that you are a God of a second chance, and I pray that may they realize that chance and grab it so that they become a success story. Let them rise Rise from the dust and the dark drums of life, and then let them begin to start a journey that glorifies you, that fulfills your purposes. My God, I pray so that your name is glorified. Father, let everyone who is part of this message today never remain the same. As we start the spring season, let this season be a season when we know we need to make an extreme makeover. Father, I pray, let it begin with me. Let me start today and make an extreme makeover. And every one of your children that are listening to this service today, let them make an extreme makeover. Father, I pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. If you were lucky enough to read the scripture that I have said, I would love you to get back to the scriptures that I've quoted at the beginning of my talk. The main scripture I told you that I will be camping on is in Proverbs chapter 4, or verse 18. The Bible says, The path of the just shineth more and more unto a perfect day. I said, from God's point of view, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, We are changed from glory to glory. Is the same God. Yes, we are changed from glory to glory. Allow me to leave you with a song that I want you to hear. It's a great song indeed, but I believe that you will love it as I play it for you today. Let the song play to warm you up, to prepare you. Yes. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
Sisi pepe lo sami. Abubu kila gwambu kona. Kezinga gwe sogunene. Sika nkuku. Mm-hmm.